This is the site of the, the tail of the Flying Dutchman. Beautiful. This is a, just an extraordinary this place. Gorgeous. Well done. Yeah. Worth, worth a trip out of Cape Town for sure. So we're staying right here outside of Cape Point Nature Reserve and we're about to drive in and take a look, go down to the Cape of Good Hope and see this entire massive nature reserve on the Cape Peninsula. We are really excited to spend the day doing this. There's supposed to be a lot of animals, a lot of beautiful scenery. This is supposed to be where the legend of the Flying Dutchman originated. So we are very excited because we have been working remotely from this Airbnb looking at this nature reserve all week and finally it's Saturday and we get to go in. It's a pretty scenic drive on the way to Cape Point. Many people take a picnic into the park, but we had to stop at this iconic tea house along M65. Hello. Ooh. So we're taking a break here on our on our drive to Cape Point at the Scone Shack, which is the most idyllic place I think I've ever seen. <laughs> we're here with Caitlin and Jorge, who you might remember from our Chile video. Um, they just brought out some scones and some tea in the tea garden, and it is a perfect day. Oh, tell tell him what they just brought that out for. Bah. <laughs> This is to knock the chickens and roosters off of the table. It's only another four minute drive to the Cape of Good Hope Pay Point once you leave the scone shack. At the time we went, standard entrance to the park was 360 Rand with discounts available to South Africans. There are dozens of hikes you could do here including two overnight hiking trails that take a few days to accomplish. Or if you decide to do this as a road trip like we did, keep your eyes peeled. You can spot antelope, baboons, and ostriches, among other things. There are allegedly a few zebras roaming around as well, but a local laughed at us when we suggested spotting one, so I'm not sure what to make of that. The most visited area of the Cape of Good Hope is probably the Cape Point Lighthouse, right at the southernmost tip of the peninsula. You can climb up there or take the very popular Flying Dutchman Funicular. ripped off by the wind. Super windy, but super beautiful, and the water is so clear. This is the site of the, the tail of the Flying Dutchman. Once upon a time, before it was called the Cape of Good Hope, this place was called the Cape of Storms. It was in one of these storms that a Dutch captain swore that he would succeed in rounding the Cape despite the pleading of his crew not to even if he had to sail until Judgment Day. The devil took him up on it and condemned him to that course for eternity. Or so they say. For hundreds of years since, from this very place, many have said they've seen the Flying Dutchman sailing through the fog and the storms, many of whom met their death shortly thereafter. Whether or not you believe the legend of the Flying Dutchman, the Cape was both a significant waypoint for sailors traveling from Europe to Asia and the site of many shipwrecks. It's estimated that over 2,500 vessels have sunk here over the past 500 years. Thankfully, on the day we visited, it was blue skies and beautiful. And the only Flying Dutchman we saw was the funicular. We've been exploring the wildlife here, the nature, and the animals, as you may be able to see right there. We've seen some ostriches, penguins, and a small tortoise crossing the road. Uh, and now we've seen Whatever that, whatever animal that is. They shed the horns and it seems like the people from our Airbnb pick them up and there's like a big centerpiece in our Airbnb with the horns from this animal. If yeah. anyone knows, 
how to call the animal. Put it down in the comments. over at Buffalo Beach which is supposed to be one of the few beaches that you can actually get in the water because the wind is so strong here at the pretty much at the end of the of the earth <laughs> this has been so gorgeous there are literally hours of hiking that you could be doing we decided to take a nap instead but the landscape here is <laughs> it's truly remarkable is that an ostrich do you see it there on the point do you see that? Yeah, you think it's an ostrich? I don't know. I don't know if it's an ostrich. It, it might, might be too big. It Anyways. Might, it might be a barbecue. <laughs> it might be a barbecue. <laughs> so there is a, a lot to do here. You could spend multiple days coming here for sure. We did pick a particularly windy day. I don't think it's always quite this bad. And if you come between June and I think November, you can actually see whales off the coast. Just, it, it's one of the best places for whale watching. But the views have been magnificent. All of the mountains and the clouds sifting over there and through the mountains and the beaches. Beautiful. This is a, just an extraordinary this place. Gorgeous. Well done. Yeah. Worth worth a trip out of Cape Town for sure. No, oh. that garbage can't it's not it's moving. It has to, let's go look. Let's it's so far. Buffles Bay is also a picnic site, and we had been warned repeatedly about aggressive baboons prowling the area, but all we saw on the day we went were ostriches. In fact, that was probably the animal we saw the most of the entire day in the nature reserve. There's also an ostrich farm right outside the entrance gate to the cave, and I can't help but wonder if the ostrich population is somehow related to that. And after spending the day in the park, there is nothing better than coming back to have a braai. Do you have to break it up? Can you just like do one larva? That's the least one. Alfred, tell us about a braai. Braai is the South African version of a barbecue. There are certain elements to a braai that I believe to be very specific, which we are undoubtedly getting wrong. That's okay. I'm sure you'll tell us down in the comments about all the things that we're not doing right about a braai. We welcome those comments. We know it's supposed to be an open flame, and we know it's supposed to take a while. We think that one of the most important elements of a braai is creating a fire. No gas grills allowed. We lit the fire and let the wood turn to coal, drinking some South African wine and beer while we waited. Even though we're out of the park, we still get to gaze out at some of these views. They are incredible. And since we're only a short walk to this tiny beach, a sunset beach walk after the braai is practically mandatory. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this content, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you next week when we check out Cape Town. More animals, part of the adventure. <laughs>